reading from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word, thanks be to God. The last few months have been an incredibly wild and chaotic journey. For most of us here, the last few months mark the second half of our semester, the second half of our academic year, and for some of you, this has been a good thing. Some people are managing a lighter course load and are able to breathe a bit easier. Finals seem like they just came at us and we managed to swift right past them. And even if you feel like you may not have performed to the best of your ability, one thing is for certain, and that's the fact that you're here right now. You managed to survive the tidal wave and you managed to move past your own personal crisis. Maybe you had the help of your family who would probably make time to come visit. They made time to visit you or made phone calls to home and they check up on you. Maybe you had the help of your friends who'd be up with you until 1.30 in the morning in the section, in the basement, or your dorm room where you'd just chat about life's problems. Maybe you had the help of a professor who reached out to you and offered their services to help you in case you were struggling on an exam, gave you an extension on your paper, and you were able to finish that assignment without having to panic at the last moment. I want to take a moment just to reflect on that last word, panic. Panic has an association with it that isn't really pleasant. Whenever we panic, we tend to not have the most rational thoughts. Whenever we make a decision, we usually go through our thought process, take some time to decide the pros and the cons, and then after some time, make a conscious decision. Sometimes we like to impulse decide, but even then, we can rationalize our actions. When people take actions whenever they are panicking, sometimes these decisions are often not made with the best mindset. Consider how we think in our own panicking mindset and then realize that there are millions of other people who also think the same way, and that can create chaos. Especially given what we're hearing all around us, from the increased tension with back and forth missile strikes from Iran and the United States back in early January, the bushfires threatening both wildlife and major cities within Australia back in February, to the novel coronavirus making a pathway that has managed to reach almost every single country in the world here now in March. It can be easy to look at the world and just feel hopeless. The last few months have been increasingly hectic, and when times are hectic, panic goes up. And whenever panic goes up, hope can sometimes go down with it. News that is constantly in our face about how bad a situation currently is, and the fact that it could potentially get even worse. It can be easy to become cynical during this time, when stress just decides to come into our lives and make a mess out of everything. This specific passage spoke to me uh, as someone who has gone through especially challenging times of chaos. However, I thought that it especially rang true to me during times like what we are witnessing in the world around us right now currently. My understanding of this passage that I take away is that in spite of challenges that come right in front of our faces that we may feel like we may not have a solution to deal with them, we have to look beyond the problem in our face and look at the solution that can eventually come. I mentioned earlier that a lot of us have a support system where even if you may not feel like you have some form of immediate support or some form of control of the situation right there, you might have someone else who's right next to you who is there to support you and guide you. 
But what about those of us who might not have that strong support system? Well, that's where this passage comes into place for us. This passage, I think, sets us on a different course mentally and allows us to remember who actually is there and has been there for us all along. And that's God. In the psalm, there are a few phrases that stuck out to me that helped me reinforce this idea. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help, help come from? Is where I found the first part of this message of relevance. Mountains symbolize challenges, obstacles that are in our life that we immediately look at and think, we're not going to be able to get over that or get through this. The mountain becomes an even greater representation when we look outside of our personal lives and then look at the, all the tragedies that are occurring around us in the greater society. We see this mountain ahead and immediately feel a sense of anxiety and confusion. How am I even going to get through this mountain? Well, the answer lies in through the later parts of the psalm. When they write, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and of earth. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Whenever it comes to great challenges, it can be easy to feel hopeless. And someone certainly can feel more hopeless whenever it feels like they don't have somebody immediately by their side. But that simply isn't true. Even though we may not have someone immediately by our side, we always have to be reminded that God is by our side. We have to be reminded of the past tragedies that occurred in the past. Today it was the coronavirus, but a hundred years ago it was the Spanish flu. The flu was devastating to the world, and for the period in which people were actively being affected, it seemed like there was no hope at all for anybody. However, I did some research, and there was a case in Philadelphia especially that rang true for this, where throughout the course of the flu, over 2,000 nuns, two-thirds of the sisters across the city, served as nurses and in hospitals, providing faith to those who were sick. Along those lines, many bishops and priests also offered as many services as they could, volunteering and helping out um, in any way they were able to. But... Aside from their offerings of physical services, they were offering something else that was just as valuable, and that was hope. The hope that through God's assistance, those tormented people will get through this crisis. I was doing some reading, and I was also reminded of certain words by an English poet by the name of William Cowper. He writes, God moves in mysterious way. His wonders to perform, he plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never-failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his work in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. When you have faith in the Lord, when all else is failing, he will be by your side. The panic may seem like it will last forever, but soon the struggle will eventually be overcome, and he will be smiling at our success. Thank you, and amen.